HSBC is one of the world's largest and most respected banks with a history of over 150 years and a presence in more than 60 countries. It claims to be the world's local bank, supporting communities, businesses, and individuals with its financial services. It also boasts of its ethical standards and social responsibility, sponsoring arts, education, and environmental projects around the globe. But behind this glossy image of a trusted and benevolent institution lies a dark and disturbing reality. HSBC has been involved in some of the most notorious cases of money laundering, tax evasion, and sanctions violations in history, enabling drug cartels, arms dealers, dictators, and terrorists to move billions of dollars through its accounts and branches. How did HSBC become a conduit for criminal and corrupt money? How did it evade detection and accountability for so long? And what are the consequences of its actions for the global financial system and the rule of law? In this documentary, we will expose the shocking truth about HSBC's money laundering scandal and reveal how the bank that was too big to jail put the world at risk. But before we do that, let's take a look at how HSBC started as a humble bank in Hong Kong and how it grew into a global giant with a reputation for excellence and integrity. To understand how HSBC got into this situation, we need to go back to its beginnings. HSBC, or the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation, was founded in 1865 by a Scottish merchant named Thomas Sutherland, who saw an opportunity to profit from the trade between China and Europe, especially after the Opium Wars. The Opium Wars were a series of conflicts between China and Britain, and later France, over the trade of opium, a highly addictive and illegal drug that was smuggled into China by British merchants. The wars resulted in the defeat of China and the opening of its ports and markets to foreign influence and exploitation. HSBC was one of the banks that financed and facilitated the opium trade and soon expanded its presence and influence in Asia and beyond. In the second half of the 20th century, HSBC grew rapidly and became one of the largest and most diversified banks in the world. It acquired and merged with many other banks and financial institutions, such as the British Bank of the Middle East, the Midland Bank, and the Republic National Bank of New York. It also established a global network of branches and subsidiaries, operating in more than 60 countries and territories, and offering a wide range of services, such as retail banking, commercial banking, investment banking, wealth management, and insurance. HSBC also benefited from the deregulation and globalization of the financial markets, which allowed it to exploit loopholes and avoid regulations in different jurisdictions. HSBC also cultivated a reputation as a trusted and respectable bank, with a strong brand and a loyal customer base. However, behind this facade of success and legitimacy, HSBC was also involved in many shady and illegal activities that would eventually come to light and tarnish its image and credibility. You may be wondering, how could such a respected bank be involved with drug lords and tyrants? As the story unfolds, pay attention to the moments where HSBC employees were aware of suspicious activity, but turned a blind eye. And okay, people at and large. who's doing the apologizing here? I am. Their greed and negligence had real consequences. Mass violence fueled by drug wars and oppression unleashed by corrupt regimes. Yet, HSBC got away with barely a slap on the wrist. This impunity set an awful precedent for the banking industry. Our story centers around HSBC's Mexico branch during the 2000s. At the time, Mexico was gripped by drug war violence as cartels battled for territory. The Sinaloa cartel emerged as the most dominant player, with its leader El Chapo becoming one of the richest men in Mexico. The cartel relied on money laundering to hide its narcotics profits and move money without detection. This is where HSBC comes in. Internal emails revealed that bank employees were well aware various Mexico accounts were linked to drug trafficking. For example, one Tijuana branch manager admitted that they opened accounts for cartels. By the bank's count, they had racked up a staggering $7 billion in suspicious transactions between 2007 and 2008 alone. 
HSBC actively courted the cartel's business, installing custom-built cash counters to handle the volume of illicit cash they'd deposit each day, amounting to billions of dollars yearly at some branches. The investigation revealed that staggering amounts of cash, hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars daily, were being deposited into HSBC Mexico using boxes specially made to fit through their teller's windows to speed the transaction. In return for these lucrative deposits, HSBC offered the Narcos special accounts, allowing unlimited anonymous cash deposits. Essentially, they put out a welcome mat for blood money. In the greed for profits, HSBC had overlooked glaring red flags, like the fact that billions of dollars moving through Mexican Casas de Cambios ended up in HSBC accounts in the Cayman Islands. By willingly banking the drug cartels, HSBC allowed them to operate more efficiently and expand their deadly trade across the region. The cartel accounts represent just the tip of the iceberg in HSBC's crooked dealings. Evidence emerged in the early 2000s that HSBC bankrolled ruthless dictators and regimes. In Sudan, the bank helped now-deposed dictator Omar al-Bashir conceal stolen public assets worth $100 million. In Libya, HSBC held accounts worth $1.4 billion linked to dictator Muammar Gaddafi's regime despite concerns about terrorist financing. The Myanmar junta also relied on HSBC to hold its ill-gotten wealth during decades of brutal oppression. In Saudi Arabia, HSBC managed accounts for wealthy Saudis linked to Al-Raji Bank, whose founder was an early financial benefactor of Osama bin Laden. When HSBC US questions dealings with Al-Raji, insiders say protests were overruled. In North Africa, HSBC processes over $1 billion in dubious wire transfers through its U.S. accounts that authorities suspect helped fund terrorist activities in the region. And for several years, HSBC allowed 25,000 transactions with Iran to sneak through U.S. financial controls in violation of sanctions. It also altered transaction records to hide this illegal activity. In all these cases, it seemed HSBC was eager to pursue profits without asking too many questions. You have to wonder, where was the integrity? How could they justify aiding such brutal regimes? Once again, we see willful blindness in action. Let's circle back to Mexico, where HSBC's cartel accounts directly fueled surging violence and chaos. To understand why, we need to examine the incentives at play. For drug traffickers, laundering money is vital to hide cash flows and pay cartel associates down the supply chain. By helping kingpins like El Chapo conceal billions, HSBC increased their power and control. With more money to go around, cartels had ample funds to purchase advanced weapons, secure smuggling routes, and scale up operations. This fueled a vicious battle for territory and drug profits. Rival gangs unleashed horrific violence on each other and civilians alike, carrying out gruesome executions, massacres, kidnappings, and extortion. Between 2007 and 2014, over 164,000 people were murdered in Mexico. Research indicates that much of this bloodshed can be directly linked to cartels with laundered money. In many ways, HSBC played a pivotal role in enabling this carnage through their negligence. Their actions had grave real-world consequences, loss of human lives on a staggering scale. When HSBC's shady dealings finally came to light in 2012, the evidence was damning. With the U.S. Justice Department hot on its trail, the bank faced heavy fines and criminal charges for money laundering and sanctions violations. Given the severity of the accusations, you'd expect HSBC executives to be punished and the bank's reputation in tatters. But this isn't what happened. Thanks to intense lobbying and government connections, HSBC managed to secure an extremely lenient settlement. The deal was announced in December 2012. Rather than racketeering charges, HSBC agreed to pay fines of $1.9 billion, mere pocket change for such a profit-flush bank. More outrageous still, not a single HSBC employee faced prison time or even criminal charges. By comparison, a regular person caught with marijuana can end up in jail for years. 
The HSBC settlement was an astonishing demonstration of impunity at the highest levels. The U.S. government had delivered a green light for banks to aid shady customers without fear. This case set an awful precedence. Crime does pay if you're rich and powerful. Very just, very real, and very powerful result. You don't think the bank got off easy? No, and I don't think the bank thinks it got off easy. In 2015, another scandal rocked HSBC, the Swiss leaks. A former employee of HSBC's private bank in Switzerland, Hervé Falciani, had stolen and leaked a massive trove of data, revealing that HSBC had helped thousands of wealthy clients evade taxes, hide assets, and conceal illicit activities. The leaked data, which covered the period from 2005 to 2007, showed that HSBC had more than 100,000 clients in 203 countries, with a total of $119 billion in assets. Among them were celebrities, politicians, businessmen, royals, and criminals. HSBC had offered them a range of services, such as setting up offshore accounts, providing fake documentation, and advising on how to avoid scrutiny and detection. The Swiss leaks exposed how HSBC had facilitated tax avoidance schemes, money laundering, arms trafficking, blood diamond trade, and even terrorism financing. Some of the most notorious clients included former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak, former Tunisian President Ben Ali, former Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, and several drug lords and arms dealers. The money laundering scandal was not an isolated or one-time incident, but rather a systemic and ongoing problem for HSBC and the banking industry as a whole. This was revealed in 2020, when a massive leak of secret documents, known as the FinCEN files, exposed how HSBC and other major banks had continued to process and transfer suspicious and fraudulent transactions, even after being fined and sanctioned by the authorities. The FinCEN files, named after the U.S. Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, consisted of more than 2,000 suspicious activity reports, or SRs, filed by banks to the U.S. authorities. The suspicious activity reports revealed that HSBC and other major banks had processed trillions of dollars of transactions for clients involved in fraud, corruption, sanctions evasion, and organized crime. The FinCEN files showed that HSBC had continued to do business with clients that it knew or suspected were involved in illegal activities, even after being fined or warned by the regulators. For example, HSBC had processed millions of dollars for a Ponzi scheme that defrauded thousands of investors, a company that was linked to the North Korean regime, and a British firm that was accused of laundering money for a Russian crime boss. The FinCEN files also showed that HSBC had failed to report or stop transactions that were flagged as suspicious by its own staff, and that it had delayed or ignored requests for information from the authorities. The list does not end here. In fact, the list of controversies of HSBC is so huge, it is not possible to cover in a single video. However, let's summarize some of the few controversies that HSBC Bank was involved with. HSBC's money laundering was not the only crime that it committed. It also engaged in another form of financial fraud, known as market manipulation. HSBC was involved in two of the biggest and most notorious cases of market manipulation in history, the Forex scandal and the LIBOR and Eurobor scandals. The Forex scandal was a global scheme to rig the foreign exchange market, which is the market where currencies are traded and exchanged. The foreign exchange market is the largest and most liquid market in the world, with an average daily turnover of over $5 trillion. The foreign exchange market is also crucial for international trade, commerce, and finance, as it determines the exchange rates between different currencies and affects the prices of goods, services, loans, and investments. HSBC, along with other major banks, such as Barclays, Citigroup, JP Morgan Chase, and UBS, conspired to manipulate the foreign exchange market by colluding with each other, sharing confidential information, and coordinating their trading strategies and actions. The banks used online chat rooms with names such as the Cartel, the Bandits Club, and the Mafia to communicate and plot their schemes. 
The banks targeted certain currency pairs, such as the euro dollar, the pound dollar, and the dollar yen, and focused on a specific time of the day, known as the fix, when the exchange rates were set and updated. The banks used their market power and influence to push the exchange rates in their favor by buying or selling large amounts of currencies in a short period of time, creating artificial demand or supply, and creating false or misleading signals to the market. The banks also use their inside information and collusion to avoid or reduce their losses and to exploit their clients, such as corporations, governments, and pension funds, who relied on the banks for their foreign exchange transactions. The bank's manipulation of the foreign exchange market resulted in huge profits for themselves and huge losses for their victims. The Forex scandal was exposed by regulators and investigators in 2013, who found that the banks had been rigging the market for at least a decade, from 2003 to 2013. The banks faced criminal charges, fines, and settlements, totaling over $10 billion for their role in the Forex scandal. HSBC alone paid $635 million to the U.S. and U.K. authorities for its involvement in the Forex scandal. That means billions in profit made and just millions in fines paid. After enabling murderous drug cartels, HSBC was now exploiting common traders. Was there no limit to its transgressions? The LIBOR and Euribor scandals were another global scheme to rig the interest rate market, which is the market where interest rates are determined and exchanged. Interest rates are the cost of borrowing or lending money, and they affect the prices and payments of various financial products, such as mortgages, loans, bonds, derivatives, and savings. The LIBOR, or the London Interbank Offered Rate, is the average interest rate at which major banks lend to each other in the London market, and it is used as a benchmark for setting interest rates for trillions of dollars worth of transactions around the world. The Euribor, or the Euro Interbank Offered Rate, is the equivalent of the LIBOR for the Eurozone market. HSBC, along with other major banks such as Barclays, Deutsche Bank, Royal Bank of Scotland, and UBS, conspired to manipulate the LIBOR and Eurobor by submitting false or misleading data to the agencies that calculated and published the rates. The banks did this for two main reasons. To make their own financial positions look better, and to profit from their trading activities that were linked to the rates. The banks either inflated or deflated the rates depending on whether they wanted to increase or decrease their borrowing costs or to benefit their trading positions. The banks also colluded with each other and with brokers and traders to coordinate their submissions and influence the rates in their favor. The bank's manipulation of the LIBOR and Euribor resulted in distorted and unfair interest rates and harmed the interests and confidence of other market participants, such as borrowers, lenders, investors, and regulators. The LIBOR and Euribor scandals were exposed by regulators and investigators in 2012, who found that the banks had been rigging the rates for at least five years, from 2007 to 2012. The banks faced criminal charges, fines, and settlements, totaling over $9 billion for their role in the LIBOR and Euribor scandals. HSBC alone paid $465 million to the U.S. and U.K. authorities for its involvement in the LIBOR and Eurobor scandals. Once again, billions of dollars in profits and just few millions out. Likewise, there are several controversies like the $3.5 billion currency scheme in 2016, where HSBC executives were accused of using confidential information from a client to trade ahead of a large currency deal and to make profits at the expense of the client and the market. The defense industry in 2018, where HSBC was accused of financing and profiting from the sale of weapons and military equipment to countries that were involved in wars, conflicts, and human rights violations. The housing crisis fine in 2018, where HSBC agreed to pay $765 million to the U.S. authorities for its role in the subprime mortgage crisis of 2007 to 2008 which triggered the global financial crisis and the Great Recession. HSBC was accused of originating and securitizing defective and fraudulent mortgages and of misleading investors and regulators about the quality and risk of the mortgage-backed securities. The support for China's security law for Hong Kong in 2020, 
where HSBC publicly endorsed and backed the controversial national security law imposed by China on Hong Kong, which threatened the autonomy, democracy, and human rights of the former British colony. HSBC's support for the law was seen as a betrayal and a capitulation to the Chinese government, and as a violation of the one country, two systems principle that governed the relationship between Hong Kong and China. The Sterling Lads In 2021, European Union authorities fined four banks, including HSBC close to $400 million, for manipulating the foreign currency market by exchanging sensitive information and trading plans, including through an online chat room dubbed Sterling Lads. These scandals and controversies show that HSBC is not a bank that can be trusted or respected. Despite repeat prosecutions and fines, HSBC seems unable or unwilling to reform. What will it take to instill accountability and responsibility? Can regulations contain its threat to the global financial system? How did HSBC get away with its crimes? How did it avoid prosecution and accountability? The answer is simple. HSBC was too big to jail. HSBC's size, influence, and connections made it immune to the law and the regulators. HSBC had a powerful lobby in Washington, London, and other capitals, and had close ties with politicians and officials. HSBC also argued that prosecuting it would have disastrous consequences for the global financial system and the economy, and that it had reformed its culture and practices. As a result, HSBC was able to negotiate settlements and deferred prosecution agreements with the authorities and to pay fines that were a fraction of its profits. For example, in 2012, HSBC agreed to pay $1.9 billion to the U.S. government for its role in the Mexican money laundering case, which was equivalent to five weeks of its income. In 2017, HSBC agreed to pay $101 million to the U.S. government for its role in the Forex rigging scandal, which was less than 1% of its annual revenue. In 2018, HSBC agreed to pay $765 million to the U.S. government for its role in the subprime mortgage crisis, which was less than 2% of its net income. In all these cases, HSBC admitted to wrongdoing, but no senior executives or employees were charged or jailed. And so we reach the end of this sordid tale of white-collar corruption. Despite pledges to mend their ways, HSBC remains plagued by instances of suspicious money flows, according to recent reporting, hinting at persistent cultural failings within modern banking to check greed with ethics. Indeed, the sordid saga of HSBC represents but a fraction of the chronic ethical rot and criminal excess ravaging global finance from within. Since 2008 alone, banks have paid over $200 billion in fines for crimes from laundering to market rigging. Yet these penalties pale in comparison to profits, while shareholders bear the cost more than individual culprits. The cycle continues as yesterday's perpetrators become today's monitors trying to clean up the next scandal. Like a parasitic worm devouring its host, the financial industry keeps gorging itself on exponential growth unhinged from the real economy. Banking assets now exceed $300 trillion, four times total global production. Does anyone benefit from such extreme financial concentration besides a tiny elite? Are we living through a second Gilded Age, echoing late 19th century laissez-faire excess of raw capitalism and yawning inequality? What reforms can align incentives towards ethical banking that serves societal needs over self-interest? The sobering HSBC case hints at grave imbalances of power and accountability. It provokes profound, urgent questions about the very purpose and pathways of progress in global banking. For where money confers the power to not just purchase luxury but impunity, vulnerability becomes the default condition for too many innocent citizens. Can finance be reformed towards shared prosperity before instability and planetary crises precipitated by extreme inequality and short-termism overwhelm our fragile global order? The stakes could not be higher at this crossroads of humanity's future. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this documentary and learned something new. 
If you want to see more documentaries like this, please subscribe to our channel, The Market Detectives, and share this video with your friends. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We would love to hear from you. See you next time on The Market Detectives.